What's up guys? Just before we start the video, I just want to apologize for the lateness on these vids. Uh, I had a very hectic week uh, this past week and it was extremely difficult uh, to get this up on time for me, so I do apologize. Uh, good news is that you guys are going to get these uh, these videos, this team builder, as well as the battle, almost one after the other, uh, sequentially. They're, they're going to be like 30 minutes apart, so you can watch the team builder and then right after watch the battle. So uh, for those of you that have already watched Leo's side and you're here, thank you for, for coming to check my side out anyway. I do really appreciate it, and... Uh, I'll say it at the end of the video, but make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy, and subscribe as always. Thanks, guys. What is up, guys? Welcome back for Week 7 of the GBA D-League. This week we are taking on the Durham Dredagons, coached by Leo, also known as Six Foot Hacks. And uh, we have his team on the right. Let's go over it really quickly. We have Kieran Black, which is one of his Zemons, Tapu Fini, Shaman, Donphan, Bronzong, Reuniclus, Greninja, Snorlax, Mega Aerodactyl, Blaziken, of course it's Blaze and not Speed Boost, guys, don't freak out, and we have, finally, his other Zemon being Raichu, so, uh, I made a very interesting team looking at this matchup, now, obviously, being a, with a 6-0 and record right now, plus 17 differential, I only need one more win across my last three matches to make playoffs, so I'm not overly pressured to win. I'm still going to try to win because I really want to beat Leo because Leo has had a really good run in every league that he's been in and uh, I want to prove my worth. This is this is really the season where I'm proving my worth, I feel, and uh, luck is a little bit playing into my favor, but you have to be somewhat lucky. You also have to be a very good player and make good plays regardless, so uh, I think that this is the league where I am really showing my stuff. I hope that it gets me into the GBA next season. That's really the goal, but um, I thought I'd try something a little bit different this week. It's very... Very interesting team. It's, it's still cohesive. It still has a great matchup against him. Uh, even though this matchup is very, very tough for me, Kyurem kills everything. Um, Reuniclus is a huge threat. If he brings it, Mega Arrow, same thing. And uh, there's a couple of his defensive mons that can really put a lot of pressure on me. Uh, things like Tapu Fini, Shaman, uh, even Dawn fans. So uh, I had to make a team in consequence to what he has. And of course, his biggest threat on his team is Greninja. If you look at my team, nothing handles Greninja well. Nothing wants to take a Dark Pulse or an Ice Beam or U-Turn, or Water Shuriken, which is what I think exactly his set will be, uh, and possibly Scarfed, because Scarfed Ice Beam beats a plus one Mence, uh, Scarf Water Shuriken beats a Scarfed Infernape with Mock Punch, and then Scarf Dark Pulse is just really nice for him to lock it, and against uh, the majority of my team, uh, and then he really just needs to U-Turn if he sees Umbreon, so, um, yeah, it's a, it's a very scary Mon against me, and on top of that, I also have to deal with Kieran Black, so, let's jump into the team, the first Mon we are bringing is Bakugo Quillfish, Back this week, I'm going to bring up the EVs, but you guys see that we are in Adamant Nature with the Intimidate ability and Black Sludge. My EVs are 244 in HP, 36 attack, uh, of course, with the Adamant Nature, like I said, 124 in defense, 44 speed F EVs, and 60 speed. The speed is on there, of course, because I speed tie Finny, and uh, I want to force him to run a lot of speed to be able to outspeed me. Uh, Poison Jab is there for the Finny, for the Shaman, uh, for even chipping down Snorlax, Mega Arrow, Blaziken, Raichu, all of those things. Aqua Jet is a really nice priority against him. Uh, it's able to clean things like Dawn, a very low Dawn fan. Uh, Mega Arrow, it does something like 30 to 35% to even a bulky variant that I expect him to bring. It's nice for a setup Blaziken, and uh, I have Taunt on there to make sure that his uh, Finny doesn't defog away my T-Spikes, because T-Spikes are going to be very important in this game. Uh, basically, the only Mon, well, all of his Mons are unaffected by T-Spikes under his Misty Terrain. However, the Mon that I want to chip down the most is going to be Tapu Finny. Because Tapu Fini is kind of, I need to force it to attack pretty much. I can't, I can't let it just get rid of my hazards and do whatever it wants, calm mind up. I can't let it do that. So I have to make sure that it's poisoned. And the best way to do that would be to Toxic Spike. He's not going to want to stay in on my Quillfish. He's not going to go into Finny on my Quillfish. And I get an Intimidate off immediately on his entire team. So this is very, very nice. It cuts down his uh, Kyurem's Fusion Bolt power. It cuts down his Mega Arrow's Earthquake. His Blaziken's Thunder Punch or Knock Off. Uh, the one lead I don't want to see against my Quillfish is going to be his Raichu. So... Quillfish looking like a very solid lead. Bronzong, of course, kind of an issue because it can psychic me, uh, but that's about it. Everything else I can deal with. Donphan, kind of bad as well. 
But uh, for the most part, like I can deal with the majority of his leads and get up my T spikes. And T spikes are extremely important. Like I want him to lead with Greninja and just give me free T spikes. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping for. Uh, if he gets up Misty Terrain, I don't really care. He has to defog, and he can't defog in this thing's face because he's gonna lose like over half of his health to my Poison Jab. Like I said, I am an adamant nature with 36 attack investments, so uh, it's gonna do a lot of damage. So pretty straightforward i just want this thing to make sure that um that his finny can't get rid of my hazards and also to weaken it down uh i also have taunt on there like i said uh for a lot of his slower mons things like snorlax that can set him up in front of me uh reuniclus bronzong obviously i don't want to take a hit from reuniclus or bronzong but still if it's a last ditch effort and i get a taunt off on something like a trick room or a uh or a stealth rocks a toxic anything like that obviously you wouldn't toxic this but you get the point calm mind from reuniclus all of those things um curse from snorlax i, I want to cover his slower mons and i think this is the best way to do it so uh uh, that is Quillfish. Moving on into our next Mon. This is sort of a win condition, I want to say. At the same time, it's not uh, my biggest win condition. Uh, we have Eneru, Thunderous. And uh, I'm bringing no stab Thunderous. We are Modest, Prankster, Yachi, Barry. We have a 68 in HP. We have 4 in Defense, 76 in Spadef, 228 in Special Attack with a Modest Nature, like I said, and 132 Speed. The Speed is enough for a Modest Kurum. It outspeeds it uh, every time. I have Yachiberry on there because a lot of his responses to my Thunderous setting up any in any way, shape, or form are going to be Ice type attacks. Either a Scarf Greninja Ice Beam, a uh, Scarf Kiram Ice Beam, a regular Kiram Ice Beam, Dawn Fans Ice Shard. A lot of ice moves across his team to hit this thing. Uh, Hidden Power Ice from Raichu. So uh, I could definitely see uh, the Yachiberry coming into play. You guys see I have Focus Blast, Sludge Wave, and Dark Pulse on there with Agility. So uh, Dark Pulse is there to hit his Bronzong and his Reuniclus. Uh, it can also flinch down his uh, Mega Arrow, but I have Focus Blast for the Mega Arrow, as well as the Kirin Black and the Greninja. Sludge Wave is there for the Tapu Fini, and it also hits the Shaman, so it can hit them both without having me, me having to use Stab. And uh, it's a pretty nice set. I get an agility off, but if you guys run some calcs with this thing, you'll notice that I failed to two-hit KO a lot of... Well, actually, I failed to Oko a lot of his team. Everything is a two-hit KO. I have set this thing up in a way where it can two-hit KO everything. And that's because our next mom on the team, probably one of the most original sets that I've brought all season on this Pokemon... We have Blair the Umbreon. Look at this thing, guys. We got Foul Play, Taunt, Moonlight, Baton Pass. I don't want to be passing wishes into anything, and I don't want to have to rely on Protect to make sure that I get my recovery. Moonlight is very good against him. Foul Play is uh, is there for the Kieran Black. Uh, chips away the Greninja, chips away the Mega Arrow. Specifically, that's the biggest thing. His Blaziken isn't a safe switch on Foul Play. Uh, Moonlight, I already explained. Taunt is there once again for his slower mons, things like... Uh, Dawn fan if it wants to go for rocks uh, or or toxic bronzong same thing rocks toxic uh, Reuniclus if it wants to get up a trick room or a calm mine um, Snorlax if it wants to start cursing up. I stop those those four main mons Umbreon can deal with really well uh, Quillfish can't really deal with Dawn fan or bronzong or Reuniclus. They all kill it So uh, Umbreon is probably my best way to stop those things from using their status moves and uh, our last move is baton pass and you guys see the item we are weakness policy with a bold nature we have i believe 200 and, uh, sorry 180 in hp 164 defense with a bold nature and 164 in spadef i actually happen to uh put the same amount of vs into defense and spadef and this is because uh i can take uh hits from kieran black decently well outside of a choice band and i can also take modest choice specs tapu finney's moon blast after rocks and live it. Uh, I don't expect him to bring Specs Finny at all. Uh, a um, a taunt uh, Nature's Madness set is a lot better against me because of Cresselia, and I know that Leo likes to overprep for Cress. So uh, that being said, I think that just a defensive Finny with Moonblast should be enough. In which case, a crit probably wouldn't even kill me because if Specs Modest doesn't kill me with Max Special Attack, then a crit Moonblast also wouldn't kill me. Uh, and I have the Taunt Pass on here to pass right out into Thunderous. And once Thunderous is in with a plus two, plus two, all I have to do is hit a Focus Blast against either Mega Arrow or Kirim if they're not weakened yet. I kill both after rocks, guaranteed. I kill Kirim Black, Max HP, Choppleberry at plus two after rocks with this Focus Blast. So that being said, I can beat his entire team with this set. Focus Blast is also there for the Snorlax because uh, I have to be able to hit that thing as hard as possible, and special moves typically don't cut it, but with plus two, they will. So I'm kind of relying a little bit on his special, super effective coverage for me, but if he brings Trick Room Reuniclus, it's going to have Focus Blast because it hits my Umbreon, 
and it hits uh, my Metagross decently well as well. It hits my Pillaswine. It hits those three specifically, as well as Zangoose. I expect it to have Shadow Ball, and I expect it to have a Psychic move. So if it hits me with a Focus Blast, I can Baton pass it out. As long as I pre prevented the Trick Room and rocks aren't up, uh, my Thunderous lives any hit from Reuniclus, and I can get up to plus two speed. At which point, I'll be able to Dark Pulse the Reuniclus, knock it out, and if his Dawn Fan is still alive, there is a chance that I do live with the Yachi Berry, his uh, Ice Shard. So normally a, uh, a pretty offensive Dawn Fan should be able to do about 45% of me with Ice Shard. So as long as I don't take more than like 80% uh, or 75-ish percent from his Reuniclus, I should be fine. Which, with a Life Orb, that's about what it does with Psy Shock. And I can really see him running Psy Shock over, or, over Psychic uh, on his Reuniclus. So... Uh, there is that. So yeah, it's a, it's a pretty uh, interesting set. I'm relying on Moonblast, I'm relying on Focus Blast, and I'm also relying on Greninja's U-Turn because I expected to bring it. I can live Max Attack, Jolly, Blaziken's Close Combat, or Super Power, whatever it runs, the, the base 120 move. Uh, high Jump Kick, it comes a little bit closer, but I think it still fails to knock me out, so I will always get off the Baton Pass. And Baton Pass is just a really nice momentum move against it, because if he brings in Finny on my Umbreon, as on the turn that I Baton Pass out, I get in my Thunderous and I scare him out anyway. He doesn't know if I have Thunderbolt or not. So, and that kind of forces him into either Shaman or his Dawn Fan. If I get a Poison with Sludge Wave on Dawn Fan, that's good. So... It's, it's a nice momentum move, and because I have the weakness policy, uh, it, it can also really put in a lot of work with passing into Thunderous. The other Mon on my team that I can pass this boost into, should the scenario call for it, is Metagross. Alphonse is coming this week with an Adamant Clear Body Choice Scarf set with 68 in HP, 188 attack, and 252 speed. I'm max speed with an Adamant Nature. The reason that I'm max speed is because I outspeed his Mega Aerodactyl speed creeping my Thunderous by a little bit. So I beat that by like two or three points. And I didn't want to invest anywhere else because the HP is fine the way it is. So if I pass a if I pass a weakness policy boost into this thing, look at his team outside of Bronzong. Nothing wants to take a plus two Meteor Mash. I have Hammer Arm on there because it's the hardest thing that I have to hit his uh, Snorlax as well as his Bronzong. Thunder Punch is there for the Finny and the Greninja, respectively. I'm also able to lock myself into an accurate move as opposed to inaccurate should I want to hit the Mega Aerodactyl. And Meteor Mash just, just hits him so hard across. Like, Dawn Fan and Bronzong are the only things that can take plus two Meteor Mash well. Everything else is going to either instantly drop or be two hit KO'd very easily. So, uh, like, Defensive Shaman gets two hit KO'd. Any variant of uh, Kirim, like even Babiri after Rocks dies. Uh, and, like, everything else just drops. Like, Greninja can possibly take a hit, but if I've weakened it gradually throughout the game through Toxic Spikes, and this is why Toxic Spikes are important, is because I need to chip down the Greninja so that I can hit it with Sludge, sludge Wave with Thunderous as opposed to Focus Blast. Uh, I need to weaken the Shaman. Uh, even though it has Natural Cure, it's still taking damage when it comes in, and unless, unless it gets up a Synthesis, it's not going to be able to stay at full health, and I need to chip away the Blaziken as well as the uh, Raichu because they both resist Meteor Mash, so... Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty much it's pretty straightforward. This thing also without a boost puts in a lot of work on his team I can just spam meteor mash at certain points and I can even bring this thing in on Aerodactyl if I know that it's gonna lock it well not lock but if it's gonna go for a rock or a flying move and Should he think that oh well, I can knock him out with earthquake now uh, And he's only thinking bullet punch and not choice scarf I can catch him off guard hit him with a meteor mash and eliminate the mega Aerodactyl Which is a huge threat to my team uh, as you guys are gonna see the last two mons on here uh, Don't take on mega arrow too well, so I got to chip away at mega arrow I dropped my stylus. Let me just pick it up and uh, so the next mon on the team is something that um, I spoke with a buddy of mine a subscriber of mine when I met him uh, Gabriel and uh, he, uh, we, we looked at the matchup together, and the first thing that we identified as one of the biggest threats to him is Decidueye. And it's been a while since I brought Kikio to a game. I think the last time might have been against Abe, but this thing has a superb matchup against my boy Leo. So Kikio this week uh, is going to be rocking 252 HP, 60 in attack, uh, 12 defense investment, 164 speed F with a careful nature and 20 speed. The 20 speed is to beat any like small speed creeps that he might make. Uh, the defensive investment is what's important. So basically, non life orb, like basically no special attack or Uniclus with Shadow Ball, if it's at uh, no boosts, does less than 33% to me. Uh, or I believe it does like 38 max, and then after leftovers, I. I 
I'm basically not three hit KO'd by Reuniclus's Shadow Ball. Uh, same thing with pretty much everything on his team outside of maybe like Kyurem's Ice Beam. Uh, no special attacks can really knock me out. Even Specs Greninja's Dark Pulse cannot knock me out. It's his physical attacks that I'm a little more worried about, like Aerodactyl, like I said. That's why I want to hit that thing as hard as possible early game. Uh, and as well as Blaziken, like those are the, the two most reliable things he has to take me out. If Reuniclus stays in on me and gets Spirit Shackled, even if it's a Calm Mind variant, I have Haze. Same deal with Snorlax. I can, obviously can't Spirit Shackle it, but I can Haze it through its curses and start Leaf Blading it. Leaf Blade is a high critical hit ratio move, so we can get off a lot of damage on that. And nothing really wants to switch into Shackle. Like, he has to play around Shackle really, really well, because if you look at his team, uh, anything that gets trapped in against me is going to have a bad time. I could be running U-turn on this set, but I decided to go with Haze just because Snorlax is a real threat, and I don't want him necessarily to... Uh, be able to just set up in front of me if he has like crunch plus return so I want to be able to uh, to haze him and then roost on there is for the survivability because this thing just has so much longevity against this team it's so good Tapu Fini can't set up calm mines in front of me if I spear shackle it in it's essentially dead uh, and then I guess he would have to taunt me which he is faster than this variant of course with his Finny but if he waste turns taunting me then I'm just going to be leaf blading him and <laughs> wearing him down uh, and with a toxic spike up when I spear shackle something in it gets worn down gradually. Like, um, my Spirit Shackle is not too strong, but it's still coming off a base 107 attack with 16 investment. It's still a decently strong move, and Leaf Blade even more so. So, uh, he would have to, like, hard switch in things like Greninja or Dawn Fan predicting the Spirit Shackle, a very bulky Shaman, uh, or even his Kirin Black and allow it to take Rocks plus, um, plus toxic spike by the way i didn't explain but metagross has rocks because i expect him to switch out against metagross quite often so i'm able to get off rocks and if you see stealth rocks it further supports the point that i might not be scarfed so uh it's a it's a cool little tech that i have there but um this thing this thing put in so much work in all of my mocks and i gotta make sure that it doesn't die early because it does so much work against my man leo uh if he decides not to bring knockoff on dawn fan and only brings ice shard i can easily take his ice shards even though i'm not too physically offensive i only have 12 investment in defense uh my hp makes up for it and allows me to take repeated ice shards so there's nothing that dawn fan can really do to me if it's uh poisoned when it comes in through the toxic spike i'll be able to spear shackle it in roost off his uh his Ice Shard hits, Leaf Blade him down, and then just repeatedly roost until he dies. So that gets rid of Dawn Fan, that opens the door for Metagross. Same thing with Bronzong, same thing with Reuniclus, those are very bulky mons that Metagross doesn't appreciate. Uh, and should I not be able to get rid of those, then Thunderous can clean them up with Dark Pulse. So that's the dynamic here, is that Decidueye is going to be in probably the most often during the game. Um, a mon that's also going to be in pretty often, I would say, is going to be our last one on the team, and that is Ace the Infernape. And uh, this is the first time I'm bringing a set like this uh, this season. I've mostly brought Scarfed, and uh, I brought the Salic Berry once, and I believe I brought Bandit against Dan. So it's um, it's a very very different set, as you guys can see. We are an impish nature with uh, Iron Fist, which doesn't really matter. Uh, leftovers, and we have 252 HP, 108 defense with an impish nature, 44 attack, uh, 36 in spadef, and 68 in speed. The speed is, uh, I believe, enough for what I expect his Kirim to run against me, uh, which is faster than my max invested base 70s, like max max speed with Jolly. Uh, so if he outspeeds that, I outspeed him. I hit 137. Uh, low kick hits Kirim actually still surprisingly hard. It hits as hard as a close combat. Uh, so despite the fact that I am an impish nature and I only have 44 attack and v EVs, uh, it does over half. So that's very nice. will o -Wisp is really good for the Dawn Fan because as you guys can see, I have Slack off on this set. So if I will o -Wisp the Dawn Fan, it can't do that much damage to me with its Earthquake. And I can just Slack it off and then U-Turn out. Uh, and U-Turn is a really nice move on here because I do expect like his main switch-ins to be things like uh, Tapu Fini and Reuniclus mainly. Uh, and you can even bring in his uh, Mega Aerodactyl if he feels comfortable enough. So, uh, and I guess Shaman if he finds out that I'm not rocking any fire moves. So U-Turn is going to be a very nice momentum move. Be able to get me into my Umbreon, which check a lot of his team or my uh, Decidueye or even my Scarf Metagross so all of those things and it's an it's a nice cycle here so it's my only momentum mon outside of Umbreon with the uh, Baton Pass which I'm not going to be clicking too too often but a U-turn is very nice because I do expect him to switch out in a lot of scenarios now the reason this thing is coming is because I do expect Leo to bring Free Shock on his Kirin with the ICMZ and Sub-Zero Slammer is impossible for my team to take the way that I want to run my Metagross, I just can't deal with the Sub-Zero Slammer. There's there's just no way. Like, 
even Pilliswine doesn't take it well because he breaks through with Terra Volt. He it, like my my uh, my thick fat is irrelevant. So this is the only switch and I have to his free shock. I don't expect Leo to run um, a uh, the Earth Power on his uh, on his Kirin because Fusion Bolt already hits Metagross pretty hard. Uh, and then he's not going to want to stay in on Metagross most of the time. He's not going to want to stay in on Infernape most of the time. And he can kill my Quillfish with Fusion Bolt anyway, which I expect him to run because it hits Salamence decently. It hits Infernape. It hits Thunderous. It hits Mega Blastoise specifically. That's the big one. I think he's going to save his Z-move uh, for when Cress would come out. But the fact that I'm not bringing Cress makes it more liberal for him to click. I want to bait him into clicking uh, Sub-Zero Slammer. Even if he doesn't bring it, even if he brings like Devastating Drake and my Infernape goes down, as long as I waste his Z-move, Umbreon can deal with his Kyurem for the most part. Home Claws doesn't set up on me because I have Foul Play. And then I can just go into my Metagross on a Dragon move and knock him out with uh, either Hammer Arm or Meteor Mash. So the, the fact that I'm pretty convinced that he's going to bring Sub-Zero Slammer is what incited me to bring this kind of Infernape set. So I really hope that it works out, and uh, I'm also really hoping that he doesn't bring Earth Power because it really only hits things that he wouldn't want to stay in on anyway, or that he can hit with Fusion Bolt. So, uh, fingers crossed, let's let's hope that's the case. Uh, he could also bring Toxic on his Kyurem to deal with Cress. Uh, should I bring like an Iapapa Berry, for example, for his Sub-Zero Slammer? Uh, and uh, he just wants to weaken my Cress gradually because like his team deals decently well with it, but it can still set up on a lot. So, that's uh, that's the team, guys. Let's go over it once more. So we have Bakugo the Quillfish with the uh, Poison Jab, Aqua Jet, Taunt, and T-Spikes Adamant. And we have uh, Thunderous, our, uh, our w one of our win cons with Focus Blast, Sludge Wave, Dark Pulse, Agility with the Yachi Berry. We have Umbreon, the uh, Blair the Umbreon, excuse me, with Foul Play, Taunt, Moonlight, Baton Pass with the Weakness Policy, Bold Nature. We have uh, our, me our Metagross, I was about to say Mega Metagross. We have Choice Scarf, uh, Adamant, Metagross with uh, Thunder Punch, Meteor Mash, Hammer Arm, and Stealth Rocks. Uh, then we have uh, one of our most amazing Pokemon on this team for his team, Kikio the Decidueye with uh, Spear Shackle, Leaf Blade, Haze, Roost with the Careful Nature and Leftovers. And finally, of course, you guys saw Ace most recently, so Impish, Leftovers, Low Kick, Will-O-Wisp, U-Turn, and Slack Off, so that's just a reiteration. I don't know why I did that. Sometimes it's a spur-of-the-moment of thing that I just do. So uh, that's the full team, guys. Um... I'm excited, at the same time I'm a little bit nervous for this game. Um, a lot of our games are a little bit delayed as um, as we've had some setbacks, so uh, Leo and I are going to be playing quite close to upload date as opposed to we would normally play a little bit earlier. Uh, so hopefully that doesn't impact uh, either either one of our prep or play. I know that I pre started prepping my, uh, my game against him a while back, so... I think I should be fine. I just hope that Leo doesn't have any struggles with prepping because I want a really good game against him, uh, but I still do want to win. So yeah, that's it, guys. If you guys did enjoy the team builder, make sure to leave a like down below. Make sure to try check out the game tomorrow. Uh, it's at 2 p.m. Eastern as usual. Check out my opponent in the description as well. His link will be there. Leo makes some great content, so you guys should definitely go hit him up. And uh, that's going to be it, guys. Make sure to hit subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you guys later.